Kia ora and welcome everybody. Thanks uh, very much for coming for this announce announcement on the National Canterbury Earthquake Memorial. In a minute I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, the Honourable Nikki Wagner, the Associate Minister for Canterbury Earthquake Recovery. But before I do that I want to pass on apologies from Ta Mark Solomon, the kaiwhakahairi of uh, Naitahu, and uh, the Mayor, uh, the Honourable Le Leanne Dalzell. Uh, they had prior commitments but they wanted to be here because this is a, a very much a joint project between the recovery agencies and a very important pro uh, project for all of us. So this is, uh, for me, uh, Rob Kerr is the Development Director for the Earthquake Memorial, an important milestone, and I think it's an important, important milestone as we look forward to how we're going to look back for a long, long period uh, and how we remember all the events over the last few years. So I'd like to invite uh, the Associate Minister to come up and uh, talk about the developed designs for the Earthquake Memorial. Kia ora. Good afternoon. Uh, I think Rob made a really good comment that we're looking forward to how we're going to look back on this, and I think probably that's the key. It's a, a nice soundbite, Rob. Um, it's absolutely my privilege to be here to reveal the sixth developed designs so that the public can have a look at the final selection and help us make a decision about them. This is an incredibly important anchor project. Um, and I think it's not just for us and for our city, but it's also for people overseas who have watched so closely what's going on here and who some of them have been involved with it. Um, you know that we have identified a site, and that's the site on the Avon Otakaro River between Montreal Street and the Bridge of Remembrance. And I think it's a particularly good site. First of all, it's beautiful. Secondly, it's very accessible to everyone, and it's versatile. And it can accommodate both the option of one or two people or a family reflecting, or a group of people for some sort of event. Um, I think also it will be a particularly important stopover and part of the promenade through Christchurch. And I feel really excited that we will be wanting to walk from, Vic, um, from Hospital Corner round the river, past the Earthquake Memorial, past the Bridge of Remembrance and thrill Victoria Square to the other side of the city. And I think that's going to become an important part of what you do when you come to Christchurch. We had a fantastic response to our call for ideas for this memorial. Over 300, about 330 people sent their ideas in from all around the world, 37 different countries, and they were so exciting. And then people looking at those felt enormously humbled about the time, energy and the compassion, the thought and the care that went into those designs. Those designs, 330 of them, were shortlisted to six by an evaluation panel, and that panel was made out of arts professionals, experts in architecture, landscape architecture, as well as representation from the bereaved families. And they shortlisted six. And then those six uh, went back and they've developed those designs. And I'd just like to show you those designs before I pass over um, to Duncan Sanderman and Rob Kerr to talk about them. So we can have a look at them up here. The six designs, this is one of the first ones which has got like a free form wall around it that people can walk into. I think all of them really focus on uh, planting and landscaping because that's what uh, this year and idea people were very interested in. This is the one that has the sounds involved with it. And of course, cherry blossoms on this one. And this is another one with a walking space and a wall of remembrance. So as you can see, they are incredible designs. Um, I'm sure they inspire a lot of thought and a lot of discussion. I think every single one of them reflects the Canterbury experience, each in a different way. And the thing that I think is really comforting is that any one of them could be an enormous 
uh, and fitting tribute to Christchurch. Um, they'll be on public display from the 24th of February until the 15th of March. Um, they're going to put them in the Botanic Gardens, just on the walkway by the museum, between the museum and the fountain, so that people can come down and have a look. And I'm really hopeful that lots of people will get involved in this, and so that everybody can have their say. And But what would be really great is if one of them rises to the top. It would be enormously satisfying if we can find one that everybody can focus on and be inspired by, and so that we can go forward with a good decision that everybody can back. So lastly, I'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in this project. An enormous number of people have been involved right from the very beginning um, when we thought of the idea of having an international competition all the people who put work into that, the people who manage those submissions, Rob and your team, um, the people who are going to carry on managing this, and then finally everybody who's going to have their say. This is, is going to be a fitting tribute. It's going to be a wonderful memorial, something that Christchurch, Canterbury and New Zealand can be proud of it. And I look forward to the discussions that are going to take place over the next couple of months. Thank you. Now I'd like to hand over to Duncan Sanderman. He's from the Christchurch City Council Civil and International Relationships Manager, and he's going to tell you more about it. Thanks, Duncan. Honourable Nikki Wagner, uh, Mayor Coe, Mr Ombler, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who worship the Mayor sends her greetings and apologies to uh, all of you today uh, that she's unable to be here on this important occasion of the public release of the final designs of the earthquake memorial. As the Minister just alluded to, I'm Duncan Sandman and I'm the Civic and International Relations Manager for the City Council. Uh, this is a major milestone towards having a place where all of us may come and reflect and remember what happened on that day nearly four years ago. What we've lost, what we did for one another on that day, the support and kindness that we continue to receive, and indeed where the future will lead uh, this fantastic city that we call our home. Uh, while the memorial is important to all of us, there's no doubt that it will have special significance for those who lost loved ones uh, at that time or those whose lives were changed forever by injury, uh, as well as those who gave the rule to rescue their fellow citizens on that day. Uh, it was most important and indeed appropriate from the Council's perspective that these members of our community, including family members from overseas, were involved in the development of the memorial from the outset. Their shared desire for a memorial to incorporate a natural space with greenery and water can be clearly seen in the selection of the memorial site and indeed in the designs that the Minister has just uh, previewed and that Rob Kerr will shortly describe. Some special groups have already had the opportunity to preview the six designs and make some comment, and now it's the turn for the rest of the community to have their say. We strongly encourage everyone to participate in this process and to help the judging panel in their very difficult task in selecting a memorial that may endure and be a place for all of us to remember and reflect. Thanks very much. Thanks, Duncan. Um, I think we'll play uh, some slides here, and I'm going to just take you through in a little bit more detail those designs. So this first one here is the Memorial Ribbon Wall, which is on the north bank. The Ribbon War Wall meanders through the site and is composed of bricks and stones from buildings and homes that have been lost looking to uh, contain the memories of the past but live on as a testament of collective unity and strength. The South Bank boasts a terrace amphitheatre carved into the bank and 185 voids within the wall commemorate, commemorate those lives that were lost. So the next one is called Chairs and Tables. This design, on permission of the artist of the uh, installation over on Madras Street, builds on that existing 185 white chairs uh, memorial and provides a continuation of the space of remembrance for those affected. Running parallel to the river, 185 bronze chairs and a 55 metre long bronze table provides a sculptural island within the memorial site. 
Suspended above the river's edge, a ribbon of names of the lost will run parallel to the table. The design introduces cherry blossoms and a Kofi grove to the existing site and an integrated layered lighting system uh, to make it uh, beautiful during the evening. This one is a green and peaceful landscape. This design uh, seeks to use the existing trees and the local greenery as a key element. It uses the earth as a foundation. It moves the soil to create a bowl-like space that encloses the memorial. The walkways seek to create an experience where visitors are drawn towards the memorial, spiralling their way through the valleys and hills. And the focal point of this design is a horse chestnut tree, which stands at the centre, sheltering a fountain with names of the lost ones engraved on its surface, illuminated at night. This design is call and response. It is a sonic field of memory. It embodies the act of calling and responding, representative of the way that neighbours and communities responded and continue to do so. The focus of this memorial is a space enclosed by less than five metre high walls of names commemorating lives lost and those that assisted in the rescue and the recovery. A pedestrian bridge crosses the Avon to connect and design is a calibrated acoustic space using the properties of concentrated sound reflection to create a series of echoes within and across the extent of the memorial. Sound installations in the east and west transitional spaces will intensify the peacefulness of the introduced Kofi Grove. This is the memorial wall. It's located on the south bank, 150 metres long, uh, and it is, this wall is the most key element of the design. Terrace steps connect the uh, the memorial space down from Oxford Terrace. Cherry blossoms trees have been incorporated into the terracing. Uh, and um, on the promenade, on the Oxford Terrace promenade side of the wall, includes, include, will include stone details mounted on the wall from buildings that have been uh, lost in the earthquakes. So the final one, in memory. This 45 metre curved wall is set into the landscape with three metre wide steps, including handrails that lead down to the base of the wall where the Vale of Tears is located. The Vale of Tears is where water trickles and shimmers down the face of the wall over the names of the lives who were lost. The intention of this part of the design is to allow private mourners to pass through the Vale of Tears and touch those that were tragically lost. 155 holes in the wall act as a repository for flowers, notes and other personal items. The design also includes a small grove of cherry blossoms to acknowledge the shared international a tragedy. Thank you very much. That is, uh, concludes the formal part of, of, uh, of the presentation. <laughs>